Hi everyone, welcome. We're down here in my wormery, preparing to check in on a couple worm bins that are already out here on the bench. But before we get started, I thought I'd share a couple tidbits of information about these systems with you. They're red wigglers, and they're systems that were just buddied up not too long ago, perhaps three or four check-ins ago. They're, uh, the older bin over here is 172 days of age, and the younger bin right here is 112 days of age. Last checked in on 12 days ago. So yeah, this younger bin was exactly 100 days of age during our previous check-in. A couple other tidbits of information about these bins. The, uh, the older bin's been fed 15 times, the younger one 9 times. Um, and their estimated worm count populations are also shown down here. And they're uh, pretty well populated bins. And that's why I'm thinking, you know, after 12 days they're probably ready for a little bit more food so it's not a overly huge amount of food that I bought down for them but it's a, a pretty fair amount as well as a number of paper towels that have been piling up up in the kitchen so I thought I'd bring down a few of them a couple of the more soiled ones to include as bedding with today's feeding and um, no coffee filters so no replacement feeding zone indicators but my little container in which I've got some coffee which I usually combined with some worm chow, but the method that we're going to be applying the worm chow with today is a little unconventional. I'll leave it to your imagination as to why it's in this dust pan over here. <laughs> and you know, if we don't forget, like we did last time, I've got my grit here as well. Last time I remember the grit can kind of made a appearance on the scene at the very last moment when I realized that I had set it out here on the bench to give them some with their feeding and I totally overlooked giving them any so perhaps today we'll be less forgetful and rem remember to include a little bit of grit with their feeding today now these top covering papers that we left for these guys are a little different from what we normally use normally we'll put perhaps a sheet of newspaper out here or something along those lines but this is actually a double sheet of paper where there's like this bleached white paper and paper bag on the opposite side this is um just a sugar bag a bag that you purchase sugar in bring it home and it's a little bit tougher than most other containers since the contents of it are a little bit heavy and I guess if you were to drop it you'd have sugar all over the place so I guess that's probably the reason they sell this stuff in doubled up bags well we don't have replacement feeding zone indicators but it does seem like the ones that we have here are sort of holding up well one of them is holding up pretty good <laughs> the other one's holding up perhaps not quite as good but that's okay it's all I've got and that's all they're gonna get so let's um let's get to feeding these guys not a lot of fanfare here pretty uh run-of-the-mill systems oh, look at that. we got quite a little worm convention occurring over here where the last feeding was applied right underneath where the feeding zones were now these corn cobs were already showing up during the last check-in 12 days ago as leftovers and at that time they still had all their kernels on them oddly enough but now today as you can see some of the kernels are still intact on the cob but a good many of them have been removed it's so interesting to see how they managed to pop the kernels off and right over here we could see some of the kernels that have come off the cob with a huge quantity of worms hanging out enjoying that delicious corn <laughs> look at them all so oh, let's hold them over here just because sometimes they fall off my hand and I always worry that they're going to slip in between the cracks so let's just avoid the division between the two bins and hold these little guys over here for a moment and check them out while they squirm in my hand Well, you know, I'm going to set these little guys down alongside the delicious corn that they were enjoying a moment ago before I so rudely interrupted them. And I imagine that within a fairly short period of time, this pile of worms right here is going to turn into pretty much no worms. 
they'll all just try to scurry out of view of the bright lights and dive down into the bedding but man look at all the worms hanging out down in the feeding zone of this this bin even here is a nice pile that I believe were probably also part of that mob hanging out around the corn cob for some reason though I thought there was a second corn cob in each system yeah but perhaps one of them had kernels and the other one didn't so it seems like right there we're seeing the second one that had no kernels on it obviously the one that had the kernels on it are the more popular one not too surprising all that yummy delicious corn just waiting to get nipped off and consumed by the wormies so we'll proceed on to excavating the feeding zone out of the younger of the two bins Let's see how things over here look I would have to imagine we're gonna end up with a similar situation but man look at the difference this would have been the one that still had kernels on it and I believe that the only reason I'm able to tell that that's the case is because there's still two or three left but they've really done a number on this one and I guess perhaps because of that they've already started to disband and go elsewhere looking for stuff to nibble on because they've already for the most part depleted that particular ear of corn of most of its kernels and they'll eventually be able to break the entire corn cob down naturally they're going to go for the um, the more juicy and easy to eat portions first saving the more difficult tougher foods for later and as we often see in these buddied up bins we've got um, we've got very similar leftover foods here with one piece of corn with kernels on it still one without similarly here although the one with the kernels on it looks like it's kind of leaps and bounds ahead of the um, the one in the other bin in the older bin so now here we've got uh, no this is the older bin the younger bin seems to be a little bit slower this is part of what they got last time so the corn cobs were already in here as leftovers last time but this was part of what they were given last time and it's so unusual because it's almost like it's see-through I don't know if you can get that same sense of the translucence of this material this is the peel I believe of a couple chunks of apple that were placed into these systems so I had a whole apple a frozen apple that I broke into four pieces cut it up into four pieces and I put two of the pieces into here and two of them over into the other bin I don't remember running into such an obvious piece of leftover apple I believe this might have actually been what was in there some of the meaty portion of the apple actually remaining still it's kind of weird to find a, a large lump of leftover when you know there were two pieces it's hard to imagine that they would have eaten one almost entirely and then left the other one with this much remaining but you know sometimes it's almost a futile effort to try to understand what the worms are trying to pull because they're always up to something that's gonna always almost always end up being a mystery because you can almost predict what they're gonna do in some cases but in other cases they're just gonna surprise you and I don't know if we just sort of glossed right past it if perhaps we did encounter the apple bits over here and maybe I was just too distracted by the corn cob could this be I think they were just oh this maybe that no I don't think so oh no here it is duh I did kind of gloss right past it and oddly enough this piece is really holding up quite a bit so I mean almost I don't know almost two or three hundred worms difference but it does seem to me according to this that the the younger system is the one that's got the greater number of worms in it by a few hundred over 3100 in the newer bin whereas the older bin here has fewer than 3000 according to our best estimates so it almost does seem like between the 
the corn cob with the kernels on it getting stripped clean and the apple bits seeming to have been depleted to a much larger degree than over here it seems like um, I don't know it seems like slightly different than what I would have predicted just based on the number of worms that are thought to live in these systems so whatever I um, I figured it's time to stop gawking at the crazy stuff going on in here and just proceed to the business at hand of trying to get this feeding taken care of but in such a way that I don't forget things like I have a tendency to do <laughs> so I don't remember the exact number of paper towels I came down here with but I figured I would just individually start divvying them out into these two systems as the foundation for today's bedding uh, <laughs> feeding as bedding so this is just going to be the the bedding that they're going to get as part of today's feeding I mean last time all we did was we took the top covering newspapers that had been resting out on top and introduced them down into the feeding zone so we really just sort of repurposed stuff that was already down in the systems as the bedding to complement the feeding here I feel a little bit better knowing that I'm introducing additional new stuff to the bin so what do we got here a pretty good assortment of different things some green beans some lettuce leaves make sure we are fair on divvying out the lettuce leaves here this is all cucumber peel let's see if we can get a few chunks of cucumber peel back over to this side these couple lemons were just sitting out here on the kitchen counter overnight after preparing a couple drinks yesterday so those didn't make it into the freezer so those couple objects are going into the bins without having the benefit of first being frozen but everything else has been frozen that includes these orange peels as well so it seems like we've pretty fairly I think divvied out the food but before we forget I'm gonna sprinkle some of this crushed eggshell onto the food just so we can not forget its application again like we did last time and then in can come this little collection of coffee that's actually been sitting around for quite some time for the past few weeks I've just been bringing coffee filters directly out of the coffee machine with their coffee in it and then this little collection of coffee that's been sitting off on the side has been somewhat neglected and I didn't really intend to use all of it but we've utilized about half of it which is a pretty good generous amount and then in can come my worm chow <laughs> with my fancy applicator shovel yeah what you're thinking happened is exactly what happened so that explains why I'm serving it up in that fashion so all those uh, all those little wormies that we were visiting in with over there were piled up and I'm assuming that they're all just hanging out right below the surface in the material right here so that should be an interesting section to till through but I figured we would um, get our feeding zone whoa, covered up nicely here Here's the uh, other piece of apple, I believe. Man, look at all the worms on this thing. Pretty amazing how they all scurry out of view, but all they did was climb underneath the food item. Very few, if any, fell off my hand, maybe one or two in the very beginning. So I guess that kind of explains the mis mystery of where all the uh, where all the worms were that we were expecting to find surrounding the apple not just the skin of a depleted apple so really quick I'm just going to do a quick upturn of the outer edges of both systems just to make sure everything seems okay very very nice 
very nice material good amount of moisture throughout the system I mean a lot of times just the amount of stuff sticking to my gloves is the the ma major telltale the obvious sign of there being perhaps a little more moisture within the system than is needed although I would say that the majority of the moisture was mainly around the feeding zones I think that the stuff that I just excavated in the outer edges might not have been quite as damp as what we encountered down the middle which is once again kind of to be expected and man so many nice castings stacking up over here in the older bin which is once again to be expected I believe so let's press on here and complete the check-in just making sure that we also examine the outer edges of the younger system over here see how things look it's quite obvious that you've got almost two months difference 60 days difference in the age of these two systems and I could tell just from plowing through the material all the little bits of residual bedding material and food scraps I'm bumping into down here whereas in the older system it just seems like there's a far greater um, proportion of castings relative to anything else over in there which is not too much of a surprise here too very nice uh, moisture level and that was kind of fun plowing through that edge of the bin where we knew there's going to be a bunch of worms hanging out in it sorry guys to disrupt you so many times over and over again <laughs> but these are fun bins I gotta say some of my systems I don't get that sense that there's quite so many worms hanging out in them but these definitely give you the impression that they're pretty heavily populated so let's start bringing back the feeding zone indicators some of them holding up a little bit better than the other <laughs> obviously and these top covering papers I kind of anticipated that they might stick around a little bit longer than your typical top covering sheet of newspaper which is what I normally use not too surprising since we've got kind of a double layer here but I'm sure that over time this stuff will get the attention of the worms too and get worked down eventually as well but whatever we'll just have to wait and see how long that takes because I do believe it is going to take a little bit longer than your, just your typical newspaper top covering so not much left to be done here other than getting things covered up put away and cleaned up that includes getting all this stuff off my glove which I usually like to try to do over here within the bin as much as possible rather than carting it off to the sink and rinsing it away little wormies are working hard to create all these beautiful castings for us shame to do away with this stuff when it's just as easy to brush it right back into the bin and preserve it all right everyone that's it for our check-in hopefully you enjoyed it if you did as always please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go that's always really appreciated and if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel that's very much appreciated as well all right everyone have a great day thanks for watching bye now